Margaret Thatcher who said, if you want something said, ask a man. If you want something done, ask a woman. Senator Dianne Feinstein, ranking member of the Senate Judiciary Committee, today sought to end the disinformation campaign around the now notorious Trump-Russia dossier by releasing 10 hours of testimony from the firm behind the dossier, Fusion GPS. Feinstein saying today, quote, the innuendo and misinformation circulating about the transcript are part of a deeply troubling effort to undermine the investigation into potential collusion and obstruction of justice. The only way to set the record straight, to make the transcript public. The founders of Fusion GPS warned in an op-ed in the New York Times last week that the dossier was being used for political purposes, writing, quote, Republicans have refused to release full transcripts of our firm's testimony even as they selectively leak details to media outlets on the far right. It's time to share what our company told investigators. The transcripts released today by Feinstein debunk the theory that the firm behind the dossier had a political agenda. In fact, testimony confirms that the British intelligence officer, Michael Steele, went to the FBI himself. Quote, he said he was professionally obligated to do it. Like if you're a lawyer and you know you find out about a crime in a lot of countries, you must report that. Also today, we're learning that the transcript described a walk-in whistleblower from the Trump team who was sharing similar information with the FBI. From the transcript, quote, my understanding was that the FBI believed Chris at this point, that they believed Chris might be credible because they had other intelligence that indicated the very the same thing. And one of those pieces of intelligence was a human source from inside the Trump organization. We are also learning that Steele cut off contact with the FBI in the days before the election as he learned the information he gave to the FBI had not been elevated to the highest levels of the bureau. Let's get right to NBC News intelligence and national security reporter Ken Delanian and New York Times justice reporter and MSNBC contributor Matt Apuzo. At the table, Associated Press White House reporter Jonathan Lemire, Elise Jordan, MSNBC analyst, Time Magazine columnist and a former aide in the George W. Bush White House, Zerlina Maxwell, former Clinton campaign advisor, now director of progressive programming for Sirius XM Radio. Also here, Steve Schmidt, Republican strategist and MSNBC contributor. Kendallinian, let me start with you and let me ask you a simple question. Why did Dianne Feinstein release the transcript? Well, we haven't heard her explain, Nicole, but one can only assume that it had a lot to do with that criminal referral against Christopher Steele on Friday that was unilaterally made by the Republicans on the committee. It's pretty clear that this committee is now risen by, uh, riven by partisanship, and, uh, and, and Feinstein took this step in response, I think, to a lot of pressure and anger from Democrats about that criminal referral accusing Christopher Steele of potentially misleading the FBI. Matt Apuzo, I don't have to tell you, um, you write most of the stories from which I learn these facts, but um, Donald Trump's allies in the media and some of them in Congress are engaged in a smear campaign against the FBI, describing it as in tatters. What I um, deduced from reading the transcripts of Glenn Simpson's testimony before the Senate Judiciary Committee is that Christopher Steele went to a meeting with an FBI contact in Rome and was so I don't want to characterize it too much, but, but, but had the impression that the FBI was unfazed by what he was telling them. So he left with this belief that it hadn't been elevated. In fact, the FBI had opened a, a, an investigation. They had um, this walk-in whistleblower, which, which I understand from some reporting uh, might have been George Papadopoulos. Is that your understanding? Yeah, so our understanding of the timeline, um, and obviously this transcript, one of the real values of releasing this is it helps us establish you know, a clearer timeline of how this began. Our understanding is that the FBI opens its investigation in the final days of July, uh, based on the information that the Australians gave the FBI about George Papadopoulos, who was running his mouth about uh, the Russians having dirt on Hillary Clinton. Plus, obviously, understanding that that had just come on the heels of the, the hack of Democratic uh, computers and the release of those emails. And then 
All, our understanding is the senior FBI people who were doing this investigation, which was a very closely held investigation, they don't receive the information from Steele until August. And, and ultimately, they don't go out to interview him until October. So you can see why Steele would be frustrated and think, oh, these guys don't care anything about what I've given them. But really, they had already opened an investigation at that point. So it becomes abundantly clear that far from being in tatters, the FBI, so acutely aware of the sensitivity of the information that was being passed on by Steele, so acutely aware of the political climate in which said information was being passed along, said nothing, left Steele with the impression that they'd done nothing. Doesn't this completely obliterate the lunatics on the right trying to depict the FBI as some tainted, biased, corrupt law enforcement agency? Well, I mean, look, it cuts, it cuts both ways, right? On the one hand, what we know about how the FBI handled the Clinton investigation uh, related to her emails and the Trump investigation is the senior people at the FBI all thought Hillary Clinton was going to win. And, and they didn't want to they didn't want to be seen as going easy on Hillary Clinton I and mean, that's why they released that uh, that statement in October that got everybody spun up about the emails again and they were super super close hold on the Trump investigation because they didn't want people to they didn't want Trump who was obviously going to lose the election they didn't want him to come out and sort of start questioning the results so they gave Trump the benefit of the doubt here on the other side the Republicans are I think it's a totally fair point to ask did political, uh, did political opposition research paid for by Hillary Clinton impact in any way uh, an ongoing FBI investigation involving the Trump campaign? I mean, that's a fair question to ask. I don't think that that is necessarily being done in bad faith. But I think a lot of the, a lot of the as you call it, a smear campaign is being done in bad faith just to muddy the water so this investigation, which is already kind of hard to understand, is even more complicated.